happening today with Foot Soldier and Arco. For this debate, Foot Soldier's taking the position that even the whitest, middle-class rock and roll music owes its roots to black culture. Arco's taking the opposition. Winner will go to whoever concedes. If we don't get a concession, put it to a poll in which you, the audience, can decide on who you think gave the more compelling case. There's no time limit, no moderation. Thank you both for debating. You can get started. Nice one. So what I'd like to do is start off by clarifying some terms. So um, as Stone just read, proposition, even the whitest middle class rock and roll music owes its roots to black culture. Uh, I guess I need to clarify it owes its roots to. Um, by that, I mean that it's significantly influenced by to the point that the music would have not existed in its current characteristic form in a recognizable way without such roots. And roots, I would say, is significant influence able to be attributed to something, um, right? Or just the common sense understanding of what we mean by that. Um, black culture, again, it's just common sense, but just to clarify what I mean by this, originating in sub-Saharan uh, Africa and the black peoples there, or a result of the same peach, uh, people and the same culture after they were brought to uh, America, um, as a result of slavery and um i guess we can define white as like white the whitest middle class rock music you, you you know what i mean by that in the common sense understanding but we can just say something like um um white culture as opposed to black culture white culture being um european North, maybe you northern european germanic um british that kind of thing or the um people who uh, the uh, came from Britain to America as opposed to the native um, uh, native Americans. Um, I think all of the terms are pretty common sense, self-explanatory. Um, uh, if not, I hope I've done a bit of clarification there. Have you got anything else you want to clarify, Arco, before we uh, get into establishing what the case is? Um, I, I understand your definitions do you want me to if i disagree with them do you want me to wait until after you've applied them to the proposition or do it now uh, i guess we can go through any disagreements uh right off the bat um well i'm not going to deny common sense understandings but i am going to deny the idea that the common sense understandings are accurate um, specifically, the one I think is the most inaccurate is white culture. My understanding of American culture, specifically culture that is not black culture, is that it is not white culture, but it is broad culture at large. And black culture is culture excluded from the broader culture. So it is not a white culture. It's not tied to the race. It's just tied to things not excluded. So it's not part of a white identity that creates this culture. But the black identity is created by being excluded from this culture. So okay. in that sense, I, I disagree with the notion of a white culture and a white music. Right. Um, so that, that's the, the biggest disagreement I have. And then um, I don't necessarily disagree with the idea of owing its roots to something, but it's not clear the standard by which you decide the roots are here, and this is where we are determining the significant influence comes from, because I think I might have a different view about what music is and what constitutes significant influence or innovation or ownership in music. Um, so I think those are places we would disagree I don't necessarily disagree with black culture. Um, I will say that the common sense understanding of culture and black culture doesn't quite um, refer to something that exists because what I think black culture is, is a response to being excluded from broader culture as a way of safeguarding and as a way of expressing when you're excluded from the concert hall. But what I take to be a culture is not just the creation of a certain art, but the creation of an art plus a set of beliefs, plus a set of values, 
and all of these things it goes on and on it's quite a large topic and it's um it is, it is distinct from other cultures that are around it but if you look at black culture and you look at the values in black culture they're not so different than the values in a broader culture because there are things like freedom being important there are similar moral attitudes um there are similar ideas about authenticity and expression. The differences that come out are the content of the stories. And there are slight changes to some of the structure, but I think that we can call those little, those not little, but we can call those changes a culture, and I'm fine doing that. But I think in actuality of what I take a culture to be, it doesn't quite refer to something distinct because on my view, black culture is American culture. I don't think that the lines are so strongly divided. Um, so I disagree in that element, but I think we can use the term black culture and we can generally understand that that it has to do with like creativity and innovation and authenticity in the black community. And I'm fine using that for the debate. Just in this metaphysical sense, I don't think it's really that, dif that distinct. From the broader culture right so um yeah thanks for clarifying that i guess we we can work through those objections in reverse order starting with black culture is american culture well yeah. i would agree with you <clears throat> um today in terms of if we if, if we look at um something happening today some musical style like we can say like some trap musical style like in hip hop trap hip hop or something um mm. like that is a few years old now and if i'm gonna say oh well this is like um black culture as opposed to american culture then i'm gonna have to make some case for segregation in the musical subculture in the artistic subcultures and although i could make some case of segregation uh, artistic segregation that's not what I was really intending by this because I'm talking about the historical context so right. I, I'm talking about when we're talking about um, black culture um, and I'm saying that certain elements of uh, popular music today rock and roll music today owe their roots from black culture one I'm, I'm not not talking about the, the uh, quote-unquote black culture today I'm talking about literally in Africa like um, pre- uh, or like whilst the ships were taking like kidnapping people mm -hmm. and taking them to America to be slaves, like whilst like in this era era, once that was going on, we had the people um singing songs, uh working in the fields um and doing call and response, and they had their own culture in a way that we see. In Brazil, Copoeira had its own culture. Even within the confines of a prison, you had the subculture of Copoeira that the prison guards weren't in on. So, like, almost definitionally so, because it was uh, like a, a secret. It was like an I inside thing, right? So, in an analogous sense, there was at the time um, two distinct cultures, right? And it's only during during you're talking about like during slavery. Yeah, right. And well, I I have a I have a question there. You brought up call and response, and it seems to me like you're assuming call and response as a musical practice in in the slave culture is distinct from European music. Do you think that call and response is not present in European music? I don't I don't think it's absent from European music, but I think that the type of the 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 feeling of what was happening and the like the the experience of experience and the type of call and response that was present in the uh, Africa Afro American slavery era call and response like field workers that wasn't the same as some uh, counterpoint. Um, it, it, it's not what Bach was doing when he but was But that's doing not the totality of European music because Celtic folk music is European music. Bal the folk music from the Balkans is European folk music. 
there were folk musics for all of these nations that is distinct from the um, bourgeoisie music. And in those folk musics in Europe, they have things like call and response. They had worker songs. Right. So, but so all of those all of those things are present in the folk music of Europeans as well. And the there, even though the slaves would be excluded from broader culture, how can you say that the call and response that occurs in slave spirituals was not somehow connected to the folk music by Europeans there. I mean, the, the question, it seems to me like you're sort of assuming that there's this golden nugget hypothesis, as I call it, when it comes to music, that, the, that there was this golden nugget from Africa brought over, maintained by the slaves in the United States, and that golden nugget had no outside influence, and then that golden nugget continued to survive as the music evolved and joined broader American culture after the slaves were freed. Right, well. So my, my view is that music is like a language and it is not a golden nugget. There are no sort of essences, but it's a stew. It's always influenced by the society and culture around you. So you cannot divorce something from that. There, I don't think that there is such a thing as golden nuggets. I think that there's all of this cross-pollination. And in the same way that black music was influencing um, like European music, European music was influencing black music. And I think your hypothesis is that this golden nugget has a stronger, more significant influence on white middle-class rock music than say a golden nugget from European music. Right, so yeah, I can address that because um, to, your golden nugget analogy, uh, we, we can just use that and say, well, how do we know it was the golden nugget that was taken from Africa and then uh, it didn't um, get um, affected or uh, influenced or cross-pollinated with the Celtic call and response and all these types of things? Well, mm -hmm. what we can do is we can just look at the blues recordings at the time. Um, well, not we don't that have time, those but... recordings. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, the no, blues no, not recordings at that, that time. rise are like, you know, 60, 70 years. The first time blues is written down is in like 1908. Yeah, yeah, right. So by, that, we, we time, have... by, that, time, by that time, black people were assimilating in broader culture. In the South, Jim Crow was keeping them separate. And of course, in other parts of the country, there was still segregation, still racism, but that's how that's how like jazz and blues emerged. These people who were freed in the South left the South and moved to major metropolitan areas in the North, places where it was more acceptable for Black people to work. There's still racism, of course. There's still some exclusion, but these musicians from the South were sharing their music with white musicians, and there's this cross pollination between the music. Right, but I'm not. I'm not saying that doesn't happen. What what I'm saying is the earliest blues recordings that we have from around the turn of the century, well, may, maybe like uh, around the uh, I think 1910s. That was like where like the the decent um, recordings started uh, happening, and mm -hmm. we can listen to this sort of material. Um, so we would say, oh, well, it's been 60 years, maybe um, 50, 60 years since uh, the origins coming over on the ships. So maybe it has been um, sig significantly altered with the cross-pollination of the other people um, influencing it. Maybe the Celtics influenced it. Maybe, maybe there was Balkan or um, other influences in this. Well, what we can do, we can listen to those recordings and we can revisit um, Africa, right, Sub-Saharan Africa, and we can compare the two. And then we can conclude that because of the striking similarity in features and the intonation and um, or not just calling it response. So that was just the first thing that I, I mentioned, but there, there's like a whole, there's a, a, a list as long as my arm of the, the influences. Um, and we can compare the two and see a striking, striking resemblance to 
the qualities present on the recordings to um, the type of uh, music back in uh, mainland Africa. Right? There's so a problem. Africa. There's a problem with the resemblance, though, because you can compare music from Scotland with music from Japan and find a resemblance. The resemblance does not mean causation. So even though there is there is music from sub-Saharan Africa that has a resemblance, and there's music in the United States that has a resemblance, that doesn't make the case that there's a connection there. Because what could have happened is that music didn't exist for those people who were brought over, and then the musical ideas were rediscovered. So one thing I'd like to talk about is the blues scale. That's a very famous scale from black culture. It is a black innovation. Now, do you do you agree with that? Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. Uh, okay. Especially with the with, with the blurring of the minor and major third. Um. It, well, it's more the fifth and the the tritone. Yeah, that, that as well. That that's that's a very Im, important one as well. But I'd say that the, the the minor and major third are actually very distinctive. Let me. Let me get my violin out just so I can talk about it. Okay, so this is the blue scale. Any disagreement? Uh, All right, it, now it, it's a a classic version of the blues scale, right? Yeah, yeah. So now I'm going to delete the blues note. Yeah, then you, you know the name it. of that. Yeah, minor pentatonic. Minor pentatonic scale is is very close to being ubiquitous. We see it pop up in cultures all over the world. Yeah. What is what is innovative? is the inflected blues note. Uh, yeah, I, I, would, I would agree. But what I would say is another poor innovation, which is not as obvious, but potentially more important for me, is the, um, the, 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 the soulfulness, the character of, um, what, what's the word, like the uncertainty um, between the the major and minor third, because when I hear when when I when I hear um, a pentatonic minor pentatonic, I'm hearing the minor third. When I hear um, a major scale, I'm hearing the major third. But when I hear a blues scale and I hear an authentic blues musician, I'm not hearing the minor or the major third. I'm hearing something in between. I'm hearing an ambiguity of the third. And that is the thing. Well, it's not an ambiguity of the third. It's an ambiguity of the fifth. Yeah, no, that as well. But the third as well. Look, I, I can grab my guitar. Look, um, uh, or you can do it on your violin as uh, well. You yeah, want. but, but let, me, let me finish my point there. The minor pentatonic. That's the bulk of the scale. This blues note is an inflection. Inflections are ornaments. So I agree with you that the ornament has a lot of potency in the music to convey a character. But when we're talking about the musical content here, the scale, how are you saying that something like this scale is owned by the black culture versus it being something that black culture took and altered? Well, um... I'll give an example. I've got my guitar here. I can. I'll play as well. No, but that's not. I want you to answer that question. Oh, I'm going to demonstrate it on the guitar. It's not a musical question, though. It's an. It's a philosophical one. Oh well, yeah. By what standard? By what standard are you saying the ownership belongs to a certain race here? Because it's almost. Well, I. I think, from my knowledge, it's unique. Um, the, the, because this is why I'm placing the emphasis on the ambiguity of the third and not of the fifth, right? Um, because although the fifth is acknowledged as 
being oh that's the bluesy note that's the bluesy bit that's that distinct uh, makes the distinction between minor pentatonic and blues that that's the bit there the the, the fifth right um the triatone um and it's like yeah like technically speaking if you're going to write notes on a stave then right that that's correct but the feeling the soul the character that is unique to black culture as i see it all comes from the third it's all about that third man do you do you want to hear the third yeah tell me what you're talking about because i it's not it's not to me it's not like a third or a fifth or anything like that but the chromatic inflection that is conveying this expressive content like the reason why it's called the blues is because it comes from this term meaning blue devils the blue devils are like depression or anxiety or agitation, this feeling of discontentment. So blue devils was just sort of like a common language term to describe being sad or discontent. And so those notes being added, those inflections convey that feeling of being sad. And those chromatic yeah. inflections are not, are not distinct in in just that music it pops up in so many other types of music where you have this chromatic this chromatic inflection to convey this sort of like sad element right but so what you're saying what you're saying is like okay you hear you hear this chromatic inflection and hearing this chromatic inflection is like all about what makes this music sad but you hearing it now is a different standard than the people playing the music in the early 1900s hearing it felt. So you hearing it is not an argument for why that innovation belongs to a certain race or why that innovation is the potency of that. Because there's been a hundred years of evolution in music. It's like a language. So when we hear music now, we have certain norms and rules we follow about what sounds good, about what's making the music have a certain feeling. And to assume that they're the same as this other time period, I don't understand why we would do that. We can only hear something from our perspective, from our context, from how we've been informed to hear something. Because the way we hear something is taught to us. In the same way that the way we use a word is taught to us. So you're having to make this assumption about the way we hear something being evidence for how it was used and intended back in the time that it was written. Well, if so you're I, gonna say that music is like a language, then we can take that and I will say yes, that's right. And then we can look at language and we can say, right, well, um, in this part of the world they speak this way and we can trace it back through this um linguistic uh family structure and we can right. say, Oh, well, Spanish and Italian, yeah. they're not the same language, but they seem to have a common ancestor. We can right, we can trace right. stuff back, right? We can say that Japanese, oh, they make now noises with their mouths, the same as Chinese people make noises with their mouths. Right, but foot soldier, I'm not people. denying, I'm not denying, I am in no way denying African influence on American music. That is not in contention here. That is not where we disagree. We disagree on the degree. We disagree on the ownership and the standard of the ownership. So it's not right. a musical debate, but a philosophical one. It's about what standard we're using to say this is owned by this group and this is owned by this other group. So your argument relies on the presupposition that white music exists, which I deny. The ownership is applied to this specific group at this time, but why are we accepting that? That hasn't been made clear. And that black culture is the has created this golden nugget that is uninfluenced and is the part of the content of this white music, which I deny. So your proposition is relying on these pre presuppositions that I'm questioning. Right. And I'd like to um, demonstrate some of them. So you, you say it's a philosophical conversation and not a musical question. Well, yes. Right. But the thing is, the evidence is in the music, right? How if we're talking about music and we need evidence for it, where the evidence, the the evidence needs the evidence needs the philosophical standard for us to accept it as evidence. Yeah. We need to right. know why we need to know why ownership here is important and why this standard of ownership is important. And once we've so, decided that that's the standard, then we can look at the evidence and see if it meets that standard. But the uh, the standard hasn't been made clear. And so that's where I'm questioning I, you. 
Right. So if I'm going to say, oh, well, we owe, um, uh, we, we owe the roots of the word pajamas to Indian culture. And you're saying, oh, well, why is that? And I'm saying, well, we can see that the word pajamas comes from Indian culture. And we can just look to Indian culture and find the word pajamas there. And we can see it comes from there. And you're saying like, oh, no, you can't do that. Right. We, we, we no, can't no, ever- it's more like foot soldier. It's more like this. If you say, hey, pajamas comes from from um, Indian culture, and I say, well, actually, we see we see cognates of pajamas in German, in Russian, in Turkish, in Arabic, and in India. So why are we saying that it belongs to India when we see the cognates pop up in all of these languages that share a common ancestor? At what point are we saying it belongs to this culture rather than this other culture when the cognates are present in multiple cultures? Well, was that an actual example just now? Or are you just using that as a hypothetical? Or are you saying that pajamas is actually... Minor pentatonic, minor pentatonic exists almost ubiquitously around the world. Yeah, which is why I've not been arguing. Inflections that are chromatic, inflections that are chromatic, that convey feeling sad, exist in many, many different cultures. I agree with all that. So the blue scale, the blue scale has cognates and yeah, it has, sure. I agree it has with influence. That. It has influence from other cultures. So my point is your golden nugget hypothesis is false. What is more accurate is it's a stew. No, I can agree with all of what you just said, but you're still not seeing the missing link. And the best way for me to depict this is just to demonstrate it. With, with the guitar, it's, it's very easy to show. So when you played the blue scale, you you played something like this. You were like... Something like this, right? And yeah, written on a stave, you are correct in saying that's the blue scale. And the only difference is that note, right? And otherwise, we just got... And we just got pentatonic, minor pentatonic, right? So written on a stave, that's correct. But I am saying the identity that we can attribute to um, sub-Saharan African black culture is not the minor pentatonic, is not the tritone, is not any chromatic element, is not any of these things which, of course, we can see uh, in Thailand or Cambodia or uh, gamelan music. We, we can see this in, in many different parts of the world. The, mm-hmm. the, the, the hidden secret golden nugget is to be found not, not where the notes are, but between the notes that is where the the golden nugget comes in so we have something which we can um we have in western music we have slurs right so we we could have two notes we 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 could we could slur two notes but and we can bend two notes this is this is present uh in western music to some degree that we can go from say like and then we could go or whatever to, to bend the note, right? We, we, we can do that. Mm-hmm. That's there. But what isn't really there is the feeling between the notes. Like it, this is a jazz thing. This is a black culture thing. The, the music is between the notes, not on the notes. So we're going back I don't to think our... it's a dichotomy like that. I don't think that the music We've only got... exists in, only exists in the shadow of the music or the mu- or it only exists in the content of the music. It's both. They work in combination. They work in synchronicity. Well, we, we can we can l- look you're, at you. You have to. Re- so you're saying you're saying that the golden nugget is in the shadow of the music. Yeah, I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play you the shadow. I'm gonna I'm gonna expose the shadow. Right. No, so, but no, no. You. I'm saying that premise that it's in the shadow. I don't agree with. It's between. So, the it's not, but, so what follows from the shadow? doesn't mean anything if I don't agree with the premise. That's where we disagree. There's no point in moving on in the debate if we disagree. So, so I'm, I'm demonstrating, or I was about to demonstrate, something which is unique to, um, uh, to sub-Saharan African music, which is the uh, predominant influence melodically, which I see in rock and roll music. And you're the... going to say, no, you're, you're going to deny me uh, to, to pursue this path for be. I, I don't know why. I don't understand why. I've explained it twice now. You're, the only reason why that is meaningful is if the premise is true. 
your premise is that the meaning of the music or the golden nugget in the music is in the shadow. That has to be true for what you say after it to be true because you're making this link, you're making the implication. So you have to show why that first premise is true. You haven't done so and you want to move on to the next part of the debate. I'm not going to allow it no, because we don't really, agree. I'm still on this part. I'm still on this part. I'm, 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 I was about to show you right now, right? So what it's I mean, evident. You're saying you're saying you're saying the evidence is between the notes. Yeah, I'm going to show you the evidence between the notes. So we have. No, I don't and, need right, the evidence so, between the notes. I need why that standard is what we should accept. I don't need the evidence for this because of it, the standard. It, it, I need that, why the standard. It's a philosophical but, argument, not a musical yeah, yeah, sure, one. Sure, why I'll, is that standard the correct one? Sure, I'll, I'll explain differently then. So. Let's say trills only existed in Germany. They were not discovered anywhere else. A trill did not exist anywhere else apart from in Germany. So then if we found that there was a culture who started using trills in their music, like, for example, a um, uh, hundred years later, Irish music started using trills in their music, and we could trace that back to German music, we could say the trills in Irish music owe its roots to German music right? That's not the case. It's just a hypothetical, but we can do that. And I can demonstrate. Sure. But the trills, uh, so let me, let me, as it relates to the proposition, the trill owing its root is different than rock and roll in totality. Those are different things. You end up making a fallacy of composition. If you say this small piece, this nugget, this, com this part of the whole owes something to this culture, therefore the whole Owe something to this culture. That's a fallacy of composition. I'm going to make the case. So you need gonna... you need to tell me you need to tell me why the standard of the whole of music owes more of something to this to something else. Well, you seem to agree with my definition of um, owing its roots too. So significantly influenced by it to the point that the music would not have existed in its current characteristic form in a recognizable sense without such roots. Right. So I no, hold on. I, I, agree, I, I agree. That's a fine definition, but I don't agree where the standards applied and why we would apply it in this time period rather than 30 years earlier or 100 years earlier or 500 years earlier. I am fine with that being the standard, but when it's applied is not where we agree. Uh, wait, like what? So so you're saying um, because. Like, I, I, I don't get it's it. It's an infinite There's, regret. It's an infinite, re infinite regress problem. I, I don't get what your objection is. It's just a simple, so just a simple infinite regress. I'm going to show you something which can 100% be traced to sub-Saharan uh, Africa, which is uh, incredibly important to rock and roll. And without it would be one of the factors. I'll give you multiple factors, but this is one of the most significant factors which contribute to rock and roll, which shape rock and roll and is making it identifiable as rock and roll today. And it can be traced back to sub-Saharan Africa. And you're denying me demonstrating this point because of some standard, which I, I don't really understand, but you're starting to get frustrated with, but I don't understand why you're denying yes, me. It's a, philosophical, it's a philosophical problem. I'm not going to grant the evidence until we agree on the philosophical problem. Then the philosophical problem is I you can't grant me the evidence because um, even though it's unique to sub-Saharan Africa, what I was about to demonstrate. So, you, Soldier, can you repeat to me what I'm trying to say here? Can you repeat to me I'm, my claim? I'm genuinely confused what your objection is right now. You're, you're trying to say that, that there's a philosophical problem and I can't do what I'm about to do, what I was about to demonstrate, showing you where the evidence is between the notes i can't i can't show you that because there's a philosophical problem and evidence is contingent problem. evidence is contingent on the standard of what we accept evidence to be the standard of what we accept has not been demonstrated or agreed upon that is where we disagree so i don't right. want to hear about the evidence anymore until we get the standard decided right that's so what i'm on about so i want so, you so, to repeat back to me what i'm asking of you for the standard so the standard um i'm not 100% clear, but let's try and work through what the standard is. Um, my understanding of the standard would be to say, oh, well, here is quite obviously um, like evidence that we can, we can say, this is evidence in a particular culture in sub-Saharan Africa, which isn't evidenced elsewhere, right? So we can trace it back to this place. And the, the, only, the only thing that you can say is, well, um, yeah, that doesn't mean causation. Correlation isn't causation. Right. Okay. That's not the only thing I'm saying. No, no. I pointed out 
twice already. It's an infinite regress problem. Okay, so we, we make the link between American music and Sub-Saharan African music and the time period's 100 years, let's say. Okay, so that's one problem. So now we'll say, all right, it owes its roots to Sub-Saharan Africa. But then we go to Sub-Saharan Africa and we go back 400 years and we find, hey, actually this music came from uh, Saudi Arabia. Okay, so now we go to Saudi Arabia and we say, American, uh, the whitest middle-class rock music in the United States owes its roots to Saudi Arabia. Then we go okay, back a thousand years. Now we go back a thousand years and we find Saudi Arabia and we say, okay, so the music in Saudi Arabia actually owes its music to Ethiopia. So then we say the whitest middle-class rock music in the United States owes its roots to Ethiopia. And then we go back 2000 years and we find actually it's in this cave in South Africa and it's thousands of years old. So the music of the whitest middle-class rock music owes its roots to this African cave in South Africa. And so why, why should I grant that it owes its roots to Sub-Saharan Africa and not to this South African cave? What is the yeah. standard that lets us decide which one of these qualifies as ownership? And why should I accept that? That's okay. the philosophical problem. I, I finally understand your, um, your, your, uh, your issue here, right? So. Um, it took a while. I don't know whether you were not clear, or whether I just wasn't understanding or I didn't hear you properly. I understand what you're saying now with the infinite regress, so that's good. Um, what I would say is that doesn't seem to be the spirit of the debate, right? That that you're now saying, oh, well, I could grant you the debate proposition, but then I'm just going to say, well, a million years ago, a caveman from Tibet could have actually started the chain reaction off, or actually we owe it to, like, the big bang or like some shit like like it, it's if it's an infinite regress then okay yeah we owe the music to the big bang uh, i can see the debate prop you win but that doesn't seem to be the spirit of the debate the spirit of the debate seems to be oh well does this come from common understanding of black culture and not some like oh yeah let's like actually just say like but, everything that foot soldier that's not <laughs> You're just basically saying like, I feel like you're not being charitable here, but that's yeah, not an argument. That's not an argument against an infinite regress problem. There are solutions, one of which would be to provide good reasons for why we should accept this standard over another one. We need the we need good reasons to accept one. So this is a challenge to your presupposition, and that is definitely within the within the spirit of a debate on a proposition because the proposition is contingent on the presuppositions. If I challenge those presuppositions, it is your burden of proof to show why I should accept that. Okay, sure. Um, I guess then I'll, I'll do that then. Um, it's, I feel like it's a bit of a tangent, but we can do that if you feel like that's where you want to go. So, um, right, I would just point out that there's an epistemic irresolvability either we have to assume that um the cultures developed in such a way that um there was no external influence which was significant to the development of the culture um and we're we're assuming black culture is black culture and black culture isn't saudi arabian culture or um a bit be, because the problem actually is not even in the problem for, for the debate proposition the, the 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 problem is a broader problem of defining black culture in general because if we say oh well black culture is actually just influenced by a saudi arabian culture then black people are uh, like that have a saudi arabian culture and they don't have a black culture and and so that's sort of a, a problem with black culture itself so what i would say is in order to talk meaningfully and actually have a conversation um at all about black culture we need to presuppose that black culture exists because if you don't grant that black culture exists we can't have a conversation about it that's so, not in contention we're not in contention about black culture we're in contention about the reasons for why this standard should be applied it's an epistemic right. problem so i don't know why you're appealing to this black culture agreement or not that's not relevant well this not, is a not, at point, not at this point not at this point in the conversation well, this is a part of music is a part of black culture. Black culture is um, a set of things. One of the things within that set is music, is art, like is food, is uh, all of the things that make up the culture. Right, but as we said earlier, the dis the the line 
between black culture and broader American culture is not is not drawn in pen. It is not even like there's not even a fence between it. There there was like physical exclusion, like segregation between people, but the language spoken, everyone in the United States was speaking English after a certain point. The English in the United States was influenced by the languages from Africa. The American Southern accents is a combination of the African languages influencing English. There are words in English in the United States that we get from these African languages, but it, the, the language is English. The broader city is English with a suburb that has influences from African languages. And what you're saying is the suburb is the significant part. And this suburb is the standard we should accept as ownership of this music of white middle-class rock music, which I reject the idea that there's even such a thing as white music. Right, so, so we, I think we can move forwards by simplifying um, what is and what isn't black culture and what is and what isn't relevant here, right? If we just say slavery didn't happen, would rock and roll exist in the form that we know it today? No, it wouldn't exist. Right, that, that is, in the spirit of the debate, going towards a concession to the debate proposition. No, no, it's not. No, it's not. It's not going to a concession. We're heading because, towards it. No, no, it doesn't lead to a concession. It doesn't entail concession. All it shows is that there's a history that links African music with American music. That's not in disagreement, Foot Soldier. That has never been in disagreement. The disagreement is the degree to which and the golden nugget hypothesis, which your music, your, your theory is relying on. We don't disagree on a lot. We actually probably agree that on many things around this topic, that black culture has an influence on rock, that rock wouldn't exist without black culture. The disagreement, and this is the important part about the debate, is the degree to which ownership is applied and significance is applied. You're saying with this proposition that the majority of the ownership of the music is black culture. You said that in text chat before we had the debate. Yeah, right. Um, so, so that's that is that is where we disagree. So, okay, so appealing so think, appealing to like African music being being part of it and saying I'm denying that is misrepresenting my view. Okay, I, I think I understand where you're coming from now. It, it's taken a while to get here. I think so. What's been happening is I have been trying to argue that um, I've been trying to evidence the influences in to rock and roll to depict that rock and roll rock and roll couldn't have significantly like existed in the form it is today without the influence um of the Af african uh, influence on it right but you agree with that right and you're just the the contention now which is a totally different angle that i was actually we've just been talking past each other because this is a totally no different I, said angle. It, I said it in my opening statement i said it in my opening statement that i'm not denying African influence. I said it that from the very beginning, you have golden nuggets, I have a stew. The degree is to how deeply we're weighting ownership here. It has never been, I'm not changing the goalposts from the very beginning, I was clear about that. It's yeah, yeah, sure, fine sure. if you didn't understand it. No, I was, we were just talking past each other, man. Like that okay. is fine. I now I understand like what you're going. blaming me for that, but it's not the case. I just I'm want not, to be clear I'm not, that I'm I was not pointing any fingers, man. I'm just saying we've been talking parts to each other. I, I'm not blaming anyone on that. I'm just saying, look, I was I was doing one thing and you were doing another. I understand where you're going with it now, right? So uh, I'm just wondering if so. Even the whitest middle class rock and roll owes its uh, roots to black culture. So, but I, I, so firstly, I've simply defined owes its roots to as significantly influenced by it to the point. Uh, that the music would have not existed in its current characteristic form in a recognizable sense without such roots. Right. And would you would you grant would you grant that the same proposition, the whitest middle class rock and roll, owes its roots to European music? Uh, that's not what the proposition is getting at, right? So even though I am asking you, would you grant it? Rock. Would you grant that? Uh, why? Uh, owes its root. No, no, that's what the, the proposition music. is saying it's not doing. 
So that's so the point here, the point here is that you're saying it owes its roots to African music, but it doesn't owe its roots to European music. But the consensus among musicologists is that blues and rock and roll and jazz is a synthesis of European and African music. It is the stew coming together where they combine and create a new music in the same way that European languages and African languages came together in the American South, created new accents and new words and new languages. It owes its roots to both. The disagreement here is to what degree we should say it owes its roots to something else. And the reason why I bring up this alternate proposition is if you're saying that your proposition denies the other one, but the accurate view is that it is both, not right, that so, it belongs to one over the other. Right, so I'm obviously granting that it's just common sense that there is influence from European culture, right? There, there, is, um, there are in instruments which didn't exist in Africa being played by um, people from Africa or Afro-Americans Right. right. And do you agree? Do you agree that those instruments, the guitar and the piano, those have tunings, right? Uh, they, they, they don't have to have frets, but you, you but could they did. They, they did have frets. They had frets and the piano was tuned. Yeah. Right. And those, but... that tuning, that tuning, that tuning is European. So the, the limitations of the instruments are providing are like creating the musical content. You can only wait, wait, play, wait a minute, wait a minute. You can only play in these twelve in these twelve notes on the piano. But so this is actually an argument that uh, you're actually arguing my side here because the whole point of the feeling of um, of the rock and roll and the blues, which rock, rock and roll um, is basically uh, rock and roll is an evolution that came out of the blues, right? So the, the blues, the whole point of the visceral feeling of the music is the um it is the vibe between the notes right because when you play the minor pentatonic with the 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 flat fifth it's that's not the blues that is not the blue the blues cannot be found simply in the notes as written on the stave so for them to have musics uh, uh, in instruments with uh, frets or keys, right? Um, well, that that that's why the guitar was such a well adopted uh, instrument, and not necessarily the 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 piano in in that sense. That's why it, it's less. The blue, flat. no, the piano is an important part of the blues. Yeah, it's, it was an it's important part of the blues. Important part. Of the, yeah, so, but uh, but I also I also I also have to disagree with you here. So, you're saying, and this is what I was talking about earlier. You're saying that like the expressive quality is the blues, not the scale. But that's just a conflation on what blues is. We can look at the content of the blue, of blues music, and we can say that this content, which is unique, is part of the blues. Do you and think you don't you, can... you don't get the expressive quality without the inflection, without the chromatic inflection? So if you're saying that the whole the whole like the heart and soul of blues music is the feeling, the feeling is created by the inflection. The inflection is in the scale. You can't separate these things like that unless you clearly articulate in what sense it's meaningful to say. So there's, I'm, blues, I'm there's, blues, there's blues as an expressive quality, and then there's the musical content, which conveys the expressive quality. Do you, do now, you think that you can represent the emotion of a blues song using notation on a stave? I don't, I, I think that symbols represent things, yes. And when you put the notation on the stave, this represents a feeling. And when you play that music, you're trying to represent that feeling. So yes, right, I think the notation, I think the notation can convey that this means to express this type of thing. Right, the way, where I differ here, right. It, this, and this is a very important distinction, which I've been trying to point out, but I, I, I didn't demonstrate because you... you uh... Also, the scale doesn't exist just on paper. I don't know why you're appealing to paper, because the scale exists orally. We can memorize the scale. We don't need sheet music at all. 
Right, no, but what I'm saying is quantized. When we quantize the scale, you've removed it's all of the quantized. elements. It's not well, the, the, the stave is, uh, the stave, uh, unless you want to have slurs and, and that type, type of stuff, the, the scale is quantized to European standards, right? So this is... No, it's saying. not. No, it's not. This is what was... <laughs> the blue scale was orally passed down to other musicians. Those musicians, those people in the black community pass it on to people outside the black community. They pass it on orally. Yeah, I know. It was given to us. I'm arguing. I'm arguing. No. I'm arguing. You made okay. the claim. Hold on, foot soldier. You made the claim. You made the claim that it's quantized there and it's quantized in this European framework. It's not. It was given orally to other musicians in this form. That's not quantizing it. Wait, you're, you're th thinking I'm saying the, uh, the, the diametric opposite thing that what I'm actually saying. What I'm saying is the blues loses all of its vibe when quantized. It only communicates the important aspects of the feeling of the blues when it is not quantized. It cannot be quantized. Quantization destroys not... the feeling. So you can no. note look, the blues look, look. in that you're way. Saying, you're saying... Look. You're saying that music is just the feeling. This is the dichotomy that I brought up earlier where you can't draw these boundaries. There are different goals. When you're describing the musical content, the goal is to get at the material that can create the vibe. So the goal there is to easily pass on the information to other musicians so that they can create the vibe using that content. You can't just create the vibe out of nothing. The vibe exists because of the musical content and because we have rules about using that content to create music. And there are ways of listening to that music which give us the vibe. All of these things are a community practice. It's a community action where we're told how to listen to it, where we're told what creates the fact, what creates the emotion, and then we, we perform that. You're saying what you're doing is you're quantizing musical vibe you end up doing the very thing you're accusing me of doing when my argument is that they have different goals when we talk about them in different settings and music works as a totality. All of these things come together and the vibe is created by all of these things. It is not some shadow that exists, not some metaphysical thing, not some essence, not some golden nugget. It's a stew where all of these things come together. I can point to, I can point to what I'm describing and say that is it, right? But you can't point it when right, it has to be transmitted word of mouth, right? So when you were trying to say, no, it can't be, it has to be transmitted word of mouth. Yeah, I, I, I know it was transmitted word of mouth. That's why I'm arguing, right? Because I didn't say have to, I said it was. There's well, I'm difference. saying it has to. I'm not saying because... necessary, it's not, I'm not saying it's logically necessary that that was the case. Well, I, I'm, I'm saying it's necessary to, um, uh, to, to transmit it in um, like uh, an auditory way, you can't simply pass notes on a piece of paper to someone and say, play that, and then expect- That's that not in contention, foot soldier. That's not in contention. Right, I mean, no, no, I'm, I'm gonna point out where we disagree. It's yeah, very important, important for the point. debate. No, this it's important, important for me to point out where we disagree. We don't disagree on that. We disagree on the idea that music is just this shadowy vibe. That is quantizing music. You're quantizing music to be just the shadowy vibe. No, that is only one component of the music where all of these things work to support something. Um, look, I'm, I'm not saying that music is only the shadowy vibe. Uh, I, I, th I think there's a misunderstanding. I think what I need to do is just demonstrate what I've been talking about the whole time with the guitar, hold on. Just need to turn on voice activity. Yeah. What I'm saying is, so if you've got the pentatonic, minor pentatonic, something like this, even with three notes, if you go, that is not unique to sub-Saharan Africa. That is not where I'm finding the vibe. The vibe is...
that this this tiny tiny raising a few cents of the the the, the minor third raising it a few cents the, the, this tiny and and with the with the the fifth as well or the um you can't notate this right because yes you can but it doesn't matter yeah yeah, yeah it doesn't matter that, if it's notated modern, or not that's going to be modern experimentation uh, experimental notation but we've had microtonal we've had microtonal notation since the renaissance it's not modern it's existed for 600 years yeah but that notation was not used right it was not applied in in but that's not your context. claim that's not your claim your claim was we can't do it it didn't exist and i'm pointing out that's not true what I'm saying is it wasn't done, right? So if we know that it wasn't done to capture the music, we know that it couldn't have been European. Like we're saying, okay, well, no, it could have come from the European order. guitar. No, that, no, 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 no. You're I'm struggling you're to get my points across. Music you keep, is only man, notated. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to get my points across. You're, you're saying, oh, well, we've got all this influence from the guitars that weren't African. Well, the guitars have frets. And in order to play the blues, you have to not play the frets. <laughs> you, you have to literally play the notes between the frets. Otherwise, you cannot play the music, right? So you have to subvert the instrument in order to play the music. So it couldn't have been the influence from the European uh, instrument there, right? It couldn't That's have been the instrument. not where we disagree. That's not where we disagree. And I tried to bring this up earlier. Look, where we disagree is the weight of the significance. Of course, the limits of the instrument are going to be surmounted by performers. Of course, the academic music in Europe was written down, but there wasn't writing down of music with oral traditions, even in Europe. So the Celtic music wasn't written down. It was passed on orally in the same way that music uh, on the plantation was passed down orally. It wasn't written down. There wasn't a need to write music down because that wasn't the musical practice. Right. So saying that European music is only written down sh puts European music in this box, this box that is just the academic music. That's not the case of what happened. People from Europe who were not part of the academy brought their folk music with them. That folk music changed in the United States too. And it changed because of influence by the music of the natives that were there. So we get things like bluegrass and country music. Bluegrass and country music are distinct from European music, but it has influence from European music and it has influence from Americans, from Native Americans and from people brought over from Africa. Now, that country music worked was also an oral tradition. That country music also was influencing the slave spirituals. So you get the music that arose in the slave culture, you get the music that arose in the common folk, the common European folk that were living in the United States or people who had European ancestry, those two musics came together. Two musics came together and created a new one, blues. You're saying that the ownership of blues is sub-Saharan. And I'm saying that that standard neglects this other history of blues. And you haven't given me a good reason why I should accept your standard. It's not a musical debate. It's a philosophical one. And you keep trying to say like, well, I need to play the scale to show it. I need to play the scale to show it. It does, the Playing the scale does not entail logically what you say it does. Well, I, 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 just, I just feel like we're arguing something different at this point. Because what I'm arguing is, look, the blues and rock and roll um, owe its roots to black culture. And I'm saying, look, here are the hallmarks that we can find. And here aren't the hallmarks. Like, there's no hallmarks to find um, in, in this way. Like we can talk about the backbeat from New Orleans. We could talk uh, about all the, we, we, we can talk all the- What all about the harmonic the structure? What about the harmonic structure that pops up in the 12 bar blues? Well, like what, what aspect of the harmonic structure do you think is not unique? Um, or, or, or do you think that is traceable to Celtic? Origins? We see that we see it we see it we see that kind of structure pop up in country music. Right, um, and can can you trace also it back? also we'll see we we'll, we we can we see that at the end of the twelve bars the harmonic movement gets faster, which is a European practice. That at the end of phrases the harmonic movement gets faster. And that's an old European practice, and we see it in folk music and academic music. 
So well, what do you mean it gets you're faster? Saying, you, you mean the 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 so like uh, blues? So blues, blues, it's like you have a chord. You have a chord for four bars. You have another chord for four bars. You have another chord for four bars, and then the last four bars it's split up into two. Yeah, right. But but that doesn't mean it gets faster. It's just like the. Yeah, That's what I, it means to get faster. Mean. That the harmonic motion, the harmonic motion gets faster, not the tempo. Yeah, right. That, so, yeah. So what's happening is the movement of the harmony goes from four bars to two bars. That that change, that division of four to two, is a really old European practice. But that's it, not even what it pops up in the hallmarks of rock and roll is. That, that's, that's a hallmark the, of the twelve bar blues, though. Yeah, and the yeah, twelve bar blues is the blues, that, roots. That, hold on, but that's the roots of rock. The twelve bar blues is the roots of rock. And if you're going to say that the significant, these significant factors means that we owe the roots to something, then you also have to say it owes its roots to European music. Right. You're but denying the, the, that in this proposition. But 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 look, if if you're just going to argue that because the uh, last um, four bars of the twelve bar blues uh, is subdivided in two, and that somehow means that that's European influence, well, we didn't retain that influence it's anyway, just, right? Into rock and roll. Not just that. It's not just that. And the twelve bar blues is the still, it is it is the twelve bar blues is still in there. Look, foot soldier, you're not understanding where we disagree. I don't disagree on African influence. I think it is there. I think there is African influence in music. We disagree, and I've said this eight times now, we disagree on the degree to which and what standard we would be using to say something like that. You're saying it's golden nuggets. I'm saying it's a stew. It's a very, very subtle difference, but I think it's important. Well, what if the stew is such that when you taste the stew, it's so overpowering with the flavor of cumin, for example, that you're like, wow, th th this this stew tastes completely of cumin, and without the cumin, uh, it, it wouldn't be the same stew. It, it just wouldn't it, it it wouldn't be the same stew, right? And then we say, oh, where does the cumin come from? It comes from sub-Saharan Africa, let's just say, for example. Um, and then you're turning around saying, oh yeah, no, but it, it, it's it's a stew. And I'm saying, yeah, but the main ingredients come from sub-Saharan Africa. And you're saying, yeah, but there's a stew of other ingredients. And how can how can we, it's a, it's a stew? It's not a golden nugget. It's a stew. It's like, yeah, okay, it's a stew. But yeah, we we can still just say the predominant ingredient here is sub-Saharan Africa. So I don't actually know. Like, I understand well, your objection. If, if it is the case, if it is the case that the stew has the majority of the ingredients from sub-Saharan Africa, then of course I would say the majority of the influence is from sub-Saharan Africa, right? That's not in contention, right. but hold, hold on. That's not in contention. What is in contention is the ingredients in the stew being African only versus being a combination of African and European. Yeah, but your I've, view, I've never said your that. view, your view is that the significant part of the stew is African. My right. view is to yeah, say yeah, they're working together. Yeah, but significant meaning that like the whole vibe, what you t when you taste it, you think, ah, yes, this is African. But I'm saying. That's not the case here. It is Afri It has African parts in it, of course. That's not in denial here. You're saying that the majority of it is. Right. Well, I'm just saying, right, it, I, I'm just going to return to the definition that I brought up at the start of the debate, which you have affirmed. I don't. Uh, debate look, you twice. don't bring the bringing up the definition does nothing unless you give me the standard, which has been in contention this whole time. You failed to give me the standard for why I should accept this time period and this reason, right? You appeal to these analogies of like, hey, the main ingredient is this. And then I come back and say, actually, that's not the main ingredient. That is an ingredient. Of course, I grant that's an ingredient, but it's working in tandem with these other ingredients. And you're saying, right. no, the main ingredient is this other one. And I'm saying, no, it's all of these ingredients working together. So okay, saying right, right. that so, you agree, uh, okay. you're just repeating at this point, you're just repeating your claims and you're not addressing what I'm trying to get you to address. I'm, I'm going to I'm going to try and address it now. Okay. I'm going to try and address it now. Right. So you've already admitted if we didn't bring the, uh, the black peoples over on the, the ships, then rock and roll wouldn't have existed in the form today. Right. OK, cool. Well, if we if the Celtics um, or the, the, the Celtics di didn't like have um like did didn't come over and have their influence would rock and roll be um recognizable as rock and roll today no without really? country without country music and without european music coming to the states we wouldn't have rock and roll today right well, we could have got there a lot quicker I, I think but okay right so why what parts of rock and roll do you feel are so important um and obviously derived 
from um Celtic music, right? That that would completely render. No, it's not just Celtic. Okay. It's not no no. It's not just Celtic. Oh, let's music. go one by one. Celtic let's music go, in go Celtic music informed country music. So just like sub-Saharan African music informed blues, country was influenced by people from other continents. And those people came to the United States and they intermingled. We have the Irish, we have German, we have French. They came here, they intermingled with the native people here. The languages mixed together, the musics mixed together, the art mixed together. And so you start to see an evolution in the United States of of these art forms take up as combinations of these different things. So we can say that, that like, oh, there's some similarity with this part in Celtic music, and there's some similarity with this part in German music, and there's some similarity with this part in Sub-Saharan African music, right? So that's, that's not in contention here. I'm not saying there's no influence from Sub-Saharan African music. What I'm saying is you're basing this rock and roll music as being like the most significant feature of the stew is from sub-Saharan African music. My view is that you're saying that like if slaves came to the United States and we never had Europeans coming to the United States, there would still be rock and roll. Right, yeah, that's, yeah. What, that's your thesis. Yeah, sure. yeah I, think that's, I think that's utterly false because the harmonic language of building things in thirds is a European practice. How, how comes it's present in sub-Saharan Africa then, like n natively? And, not, and, and not, it's not, not, it's not, not, as, not as I've been arguing it's as well. Present, it's, not pre it's, not present, it's not present in the sense that we see it in the United States. This, as I've been arguing as well, it's, it's, not, it's not even... Let me, finish my, not even let, me finish, let me finish my point. The music being based, the harmonic vertical language being based on thirds is a European thing. When you're playing music that's written in uh, pentatonic music, which we see all around the world, it's a combination of these thirds and fourths. You're going to be using the notes in those scales and some harmonies that are in thirds pop up, but you don't see the harmonic movement of one, four, one, five. That's a European thing. Well, look, man, um, when we're... So you that's grant a, that's, that's a, a European thing to the thirds. That's a different thing to the third. So in terms of the no, thirds, the we're not one, the, hold on. That's not a different thing. The one scale is built of thirds. You have the first scale degree, the third scale degree, and the fifth scale degree. All of those degrees are a third apart. When you put them together and play them at the same time, you get a vertical harmony. That harmony is the one chord. A one chord is tertiary. Okay. When you move to another chord, built on the scale degree, you get another tertiary chord built on thirds. It is not different. The harmonic language comes from this European practice of constructing vertical harmonies based on thirds. You've got a point in Mojo Jazz, but you don't really have much of a point in rock and roll. Like we think about Green Day, it's the first and the fifth, right? And all of, all of these, um, like you, you can just trace back uh, in listening Hold to on. early the first and the recordings. Fifth what? The first and the fifth what? What, what do you mean? You said it's the first and the fifth. What are you referring to? Like power chords? In Green like Day. You, 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 yeah. you, have, you have like no third. Right, but like power, chords, <laughs> power chords are like pedals. So the, the, those perfect notes, the, the fifths and the octaves that are popping up, they're outlining this harmony of the one chord without the third and then the four chord without the third and the one chord without the third, and the fifth chord without the third, that, uh, harm it, that harmonic can't, motion can't that harmonic oh, motion is European. You can't say it's European, but they took the third out. No, I'm not having, yes, any, of yes, I'm not having any of that nonsense. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You can't say, oh, a, a, a one chord is a European invention. That's just the bloody root note, dude. <laughs> like, you can't say one, one, one chord is Euro European somehow, and then adding a fifth. Look, foot soldier, hold dude, on. I, hold I'm, on. Not, I'm not buying Listen. any of that. Yeah, but that's not an argument. Just saying you don't agree with me is an argument. And it here I'm pointing, like, I can explain it to you. I can explain it to you. The, whenever you have, so that power chord is an invention in rock and roll. That's not an argument for that invention not being influenced by the Western harmonic language. The point I'm making is you have the Western harmonic language and then what rock and roll musicians did with it is they removed something. They removed the third 
so that it would have this power. That power of these perfect harmonies also exists in Western classical music and folk music. You see it at cadences. The third will be removed at cadences to make it feel more final, to give it more potency. It is a Western practice to remove the third. So saying like, I'm not going to buy removing the third is it no longer makes it European. That does, that's not an argument. That's just saying like, I don't agree. You're not making any kind of claim there that has any potency. But I'm just saying that there's an influence of this harmonic motion that we can trace back to Europe, which means that blues also owes something to European music. I'm not what denying saying, that it owes something to African music. What you're saying is that you're claiming with certainty that uh, having a, a, a one and a five um, note in a, played together, right? This is attributable to European music because that's European music and they removed the third. Like, how can you say that with any epistemic? Form? I'm not saying, I'm saying we can see the lineage. Yeah, but we I can, can see the lineage. I, I can just look at Gamelan music and, and see that they, they center stuff around um, the, 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 the first and then they might move no, that's to, false. to that's some false. other. The notion, hold on, the notion of a scale in Gamelan music is nothing like the Western notion. In the Western notion of a scale, one note is played at a time. In a gamelan scale, the Paylog scale, you have to have two notes at the same time. And the scale is actually the overtone that rises when you play both notes at the same time. They're tuned to be so out of tune that they create this hidden note. So the notion of scale here doesn't apply to gamelan music. Your analogy doesn't work. I, I, all I was saying is, you, you can have movements in music. You can you, uh, you can look at um, Indian music. You can look at um, right. like any music from around the world. You can you have progressions. You have progressions yes. in sub-Saharan African music. You have progressions, right. right? And then you're saying that to have uh, a progression is now Eastern. Is is no? Nope, that's not the claim. Okay, that's so, not the claim. so so my claim. Have, hold on, my claim. Third, my no, nope, I have to interject here, foot soldier. My claim is not that progression is European. That's never been my claim. That's a straw man. My claim is that the harmonic progression we see in rock and roll can be traced back to European harmonic progressions. That says nothing about harmonic progression in Indian music or gamelan music or Japanese music or Chinese music. All of that stuff is irrelevant. This is just a claim about lineage. Right. I don't... Can, can you... Can you do that with certainty? Can you trace back with certainty that the progression is, um, th this type of progression is of European heritage? What do you mean by certainty? I, you, you just, you, you seem to be saying, oh yeah, it, it, we can trace it back there. Whereas in, in terms of what I'm saying, uh, these elements, we can listen to recordings of sub-Saharan African folk music and we can hear these things being played there. When were those without, recordings is, made? When were those recordings made? like um, early, uh, like last century. The, the recording in Sub-Saharan African music, like when recording came out, 1908, something like that, 1910? Yeah, yeah like we're talking like some, yeah, yeah. sometime okay, before so the 1900s. Okay, so you don't have recordings, you don't have recordings of, of music from 1800, right? Not from 1800. Right, so you're still, you're going to have to use the same types of things that I'm using, which is looking at sort of, these musical practices and the lineages and the things that are written down, this is the practice of musicologists, where they look at these ideas that come up, they look at the oral traditions, they, they read material from that time period describing the music. So they, look at composers, they look at composers who are quoting music from that time period. So and then we can see these practices that pop up in music today and we can see the music that influenced that music and the music that influenced that music and the inf music that influenced that music. And you can go back and go back and have a general idea about where these ideas came from. Right. So it's not so going to be you know, the recording isn't the recording in 1900 is not going to give a certainty, not like you're demanding for me. So, so, so you your epistemic standard for me is not going to apply for you. So your objection is that within the years between the uh, slave ships starting and the first recording of sub-saharan african folk music there was significant potential european influence into sub-saharan africa which um adulterated the oranges i've never made the claim about sub-saharan africa right well then the, the claim is moot uh, about 
uh, the uncertainty because of the lateness of the recordings, right? Because we can just assume no, that there was an isolation. No, no, no. The claim is about in the United States. It's about the evolution of music in the United States. Yeah, but what I'm saying, look, we can look at the evolution in the United States, but then we can contrast it. We can go back and look. look what what was the source? We, we go back to sub-Saharan Africa and just look there. And but you're like, not oh. hearing the source, but soldier. Music evolves. It changes over time. Yeah, it which is what I just asked you. I just asked you that. Let me finish. It doesn't, it doesn't stay static over time. So in sub-Saharan Africa, it could have evolved. I never said that it evolved because of Europeans going to sub-Saharan Africa. It's logically possible. Yes, there was trading going on in sub-Saharan Africa. There was colonization going on and there was intermingling of the cultures in Africa. Of course, there's a possibility that there was some influence there. I'm not making a claim about that. I don't care. My point is just about the epistemic standard you're providing here. You're saying because we get a recording from sub-Saharan Africa and we can record music in the United States and they sound similar, that's now evidence that that similar sound is from Africa, but it's possible that they evolved on two separate lineages because some of those features also pop up in other cultures that evolved on separate lineages. It doesn't mean that we have a 100% link to what you're saying to Sub-Saharan Africa. I'm not denying influence from Sub-Saharan Africa. All I'm saying is that the blues, rock and roll, jazz, American music, American culture, is a synthesis of Africa and Europe. You're saying that the flavor, the predominant flavor, is African. That's the meaningful part. That's right, your that's, what that's I'm your saying. proposition. That's your proposition in this yeah, that's debate. What I'm, saying. I'm just saying that that's false. You haven't given us an epistemic standard for why that's the case. I deny the presupposition that there's such a thing as white music. I don't deny black culture. I'm not denying influences from these countries. All I'm saying is that there's influence from both continents that are meaningful and significant to the music. Right. Um, we just disagree on the meaningful, significant part. So at this point, we're looping. Uh, unless you, I, I, I'm happy for you to respond to that, but I'd like to go to a vote. Right, sure. Yeah, uh, there was a lot in there. I think um, the spirit of the debate um, seems to be something other than what I was interested in discussing. Like, I was. Uh, interested in discussing the extent and maybe having a fun chat about the elements of the soup, right, of the stew, saying, oh, well, the African flavor is really present and here's the reasons why and we can trace it back and talk about that. But it just seems that you are just um, at this point getting frustrated and um, gi giving like a rigid epistemic sort of um, goalposts, which I'm not really bothered to meet so on that basis it um i i i feel like i you don't haven't you haven't changed my mind on the debate sure. proposition right but That's i'm not... happy i'm happy to say that i was unable to uh offer you what you required in the debate to meet whatever standard you you want like uh, i think it's self-evident that we have um what white music is is self-evident. It's a juxtaposition from black music. I think um, we, we we can just talk about all of the elements that goes into stew, and we didn't end up doing that because we got hung up on um, on some sort of like epistemic standard of uh, in, instead of just using like common sense and um, discussing the spirit of what I was intending to do in the debate. I feel like it's sort of gone in a bit of an, another direction. And if that's the direction and the sentiment of the debate, then yeah, I didn't provide you. I was unable to um, de de defend the proposition in, in that way, but I felt like we didn't even really um, argue in the spirit of what I was trying to defend by the proposition. Um, we talked and, about this in text chat, and I and you said that, and I pointed out that by I was going to bring up these presuppositions. I was going to point out that... Um, the standard, the significance is where we disagree. We agreed on those terms before the debate. So in the spirit of the proposition, we we debated as I, I understood it before we went into it. We had a discussion about it. And right. as it refers to the proposition, it only is obtained if the premises are true. If right, the presuppositions it, are true, it. and I have, I have gone through and pointed out that you haven't demonstrated the presuppositions, so the proposition is not obtained.
Right. Yeah. So I'm I'm saying by by the standards that you're throwing on me here, I haven't satisfied those standards. But like, if you're gonna like reject something like um, white music, and that is like that is the proposition, and we're supposed to be arguing about that, then I would say that that is something like that's not something that I was intending to argue about. The the, the debate was about the the music, right? Not about the um, like some epistemic certainty of uh, like infinite regresses we got hung up on for a while and, and all this uh, other stuff, which I felt was sort of tangen tangential to the actual debate topic. So if you, if you see, if you honestly see the, the, the proposition like that, we don't even need to go to the vote, uh, to vote. So I'll just like um, concede uh, on, uh, I, I didn't define the proposition rigidly enough it was a fun proposition i didn't define it rigidly enough uh, in a technical way so I'll, I'll concede it in that sense um i'd be interested in actually debating what I, I wanted it to be in a spirit of another occasion perhaps uh the actual musical elements of it but um but yeah it, 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 I, I don't think we need to go to vote so if if that is honestly the way that you saw the prop then i'll just say okay i'll concede to that but yeah uh maybe well, we i don't know if that should be the standard for how people would decide the debate or concession. Right. Well, that's just what I take the proposition to be. I'm not like, an, it doesn't mean that that's the way it should be. Right. Well, I'm, I'm offering you a concession if you want, otherwise we can do votes. I, I've, I felt like there's a lot that we could have had a fun chat about, but it, it went down a bit of a different path that I was expecting, but okay, cool. Mm -hmm. you, you can choose either you can take the concession or go to votes. Well, I don't want to, I don't want to choose. Let's go to votes then, man. Okay. I think you'll win anyway, to be honest. Um, and no hard feelings, foot soldier. I just, I kind of turn it on when I'm in a debate versus in a discussion. Yeah, sure. I felt, I just felt your frustration and that I was sort of unable to communicate what I was feeling and we got caught up a lot. Like, I felt like maybe if it was like a genuine philosophical debate, I could probably be more rigid and systematic with it but i was just like had my guitar here and sort of expected to sort of like uh discuss like about like cool stuff from black influence mm -hmm. and stuff and like, I, it went in a slightly different direction yeah maybe it was just a misunderstanding on my part then yeah no worries man yeah no hard feelings i'm i'm sorry if i frustrated you or if i came across as being mad <laughs> well, I did, did think you were getting a bit mad at me. I was like, "Oh shit!" But, um, yeah, <laughs> well, know. it's it's not it's not personal. I just get fixated on on like claims and proving the claims, and um, so like in in a competition, I don't like see. Um, I, I'm more I'm seeing more of the claims and like in attacking those claims. Yeah. No one's voting. <laughs> so the poll <laughs> the poll has been posted in debate chat. And um, I think Stone is away uh, currently. But um, thank you, Foot Soldier, for debating. I'm sorry yeah, if I misunderstood right. your proposition. And, um, and Yeah, I, to be honest, I, I think I was unclear as to my proposition. Uh, I wasn't tech, like, in my other propositions, I've been very technical recently to ensure that it's not misunderstood. In this one, this was a bit of a sort of like a quite a fun, unquote, one. fun one. So it was like I didn't define it rigidly. Um, so right. I guess that's where the. Uh,